Today we're going to show you how to install the force crack and trolling motor. For this process, you will need a drill, 5 16 inch or 8 millimeter drill bit, a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, a 4 millimeter hex bit or wrench, a 9 16 inch or 14 millimeter socket, a torque wrench, and a circuit breaker rated for continuous 60 amps. Garmin recommends two people for this installation. The force crack and trolling motor must be mounted to the bow of the boat and as close to the center of the boat as possible. The mount must be installed with the top of the outlook overhanging the gunnel of the boat. The U-shape should also be over the side of the boat. Verify the deck is strong enough for the weight and force of the trolling motor. Use a backing plate or reinforce the boat if needed. The motor secures to the deck of the boat using bolts. You must have room to secure the mount from the underside using washers and nuts. There also must be clearance to move from the deployed to the stowed position and back again, staying clear of any obstacles. For connection considerations, you must connect the trolling motor to a 24 or 36 volt battery bank capable of supplying 60 amps continuously. A 60 amp continuous circuit breaker must also be added to the power source. The 60 amp breaker is sold separately and can be found at the on-screen link. All six holes will need to be used to mount the trolling motor. Follow the link in the description for guidance on approved mounting alternatives if your boat shape does not allow you to use all six holes. Using a 5 16 inch or 8 millimeter drill bit, drill the mounting holes. Place the motor on the deck of the boat, aligning the holes on the mount with the mounting holes. The included bolts are compatible with most vessels. But if the supplied bolts are not long enough to attach the bolts, washers, and locking nuts, you must obtain the stainless steel Panhead Phillips quarter 20 screws. Secure the mount to the deck using the included bolts, washers, and locking nuts in the two holes closest to the gunnel or edge of the boat deck. Tighten the nuts to 8 foot pounds. Adjust the depth stop so that the motor can deploy without hitting the ground. Press the release and slide the propeller drive motor head out and pivot the trolling motor into the deployed position. Secure the mount to the deck using the included bolts, washers, and locking nuts in the remaining holes. Tighten the nuts to 8 foot pounds. On the 90-inch crack and trolling motor, the nose cone and skeg will need to be installed on the motor using a 4mm hex bit or wrench. For the skeg, make sure the longer end faces the propeller side. Next, we will install the propeller. Rotate the motor shaft to orient the pin horizontally so it's less likely to fall out during installation. Insert the pin through the propeller motor shaft. Align the channel on the inside of the propeller with the pin on the slide of the propeller onto the motor shaft. Now place the anode, washer, lock washer, and nut onto the end of the motor shaft. Tighten the lock nut to 6 foot pounds to secure the propeller using a 14 millimeter socket. Now let's connect the trolling motor to power. Route the power cable to the breaker panel or location where you plan to install the breaker. If you need to extend the power cable, use the appropriate gauge wire based on the length of the extension. A trolling motor plug and receptacle rated for 60 amps or greater where the power cable enters the bulkhead is optional. This can be purchased on our website separately with the link on screen. Connect the power cable to a circuit breaker rated for 60 continuous amps. A circuit breaker is not included. The circuit breaker must be in the off position before you connect the power cables from the trolling motor. If necessary, connect the circuit breaker to a 60 amp. 24 or 36 volt power source. 
route the transducer cable to your compatible chart plotter. If needed, connect the included extension cable or a logger extension cable. Install the O-ring and the locking collar on the end of the transducer cable. Then, connect the transducer cable to the transducer port on the back of the chart plotter, securing the locking collar on the 12-pin transducer port. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.